Welcome back everyone to Forza Motorsport 6. We're doing the final race in the you US tour. Opponent's skill to be a perfect match for you. Select Drivatar difficulty to adjust your opponent's skill and try again. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we're doing the US tour. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, just failed at the uh, race on uh, Laguna Seca. I only got fourth and I was supposed to get uh, third or higher. So yeah, uh, I've got to take this mod off because this is a, one of the reasons why I uh, failed. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, opt for a new pack. See if we can get any boosts. I've got a fifty grand one. I oh, wouldn't really get anything really there. That though. So yeah, uh, I uh, turned the uh, steering onto simulation mode in the last episode, but as you can see here on the right, it says, "Please note this is make this mode is difficult with a controller," and I am using a controller, so it's evidently only really for uh, steering wheels. And even though I was doing all right, it snapped on me several times, and I had to rewind, and it just really broke the uh, flow of racing. So yeah, I've turned it back to normal. And to compensate for that, I've turned the traffic driver to difficulty up to expert. So yeah, I've swapped one out for the other. So yeah, should uh, hopefully make for some better racing out of the way. So let's start this one. This is the final race in the US Open Tour, the US Tour, whatever. So yeah, do this one and then we'll move on to the next series, whatever that will be. Hopefully in a car I enjoy a bit better than this. It's so much nicer to have this gearbox that's working properly. No more slow gear. Right. Let's do a lot better than I did off the recording. Being far more aggressive than the uh, at the time that I uh, tried this, that I haven't included in this video. When I uh, failed, I never felt even worse then. But yeah, they were far more aggressive last time. Maybe they've calmed down a bit. Yeah, it's such a nice relief to have a car that has a gearbox that's working. <laughs> Subaru has the acceleration on me in some areas. I think I have the handling, yeah. And therefore carry more speed for a corner and therefore more on the straight. It's 
German car versus German car. Bye, Mr. Audi. All I have to do is not make any big mistakes. Fight for first position. Coming up to the finish. Whoa! Right with me there. He made a mistake, so he's paid for. Bigger mistake there. <laughs> and into first we go. Solid end to the series, I think you'll be fine. And that's finished. Well done. You completed the series. Congratulations. You've mastered the performance of agile sporty vehicles. Now, compete with the very best example of sports car icons. Sweet, now we're on volume two. And we get a spin prize. 20 grand, decent enough I guess. Pay for a few upgrades if I need to do any to a car. wonder what cars we can choose out of this one. Whether it's a sports sedan for business people, an SUV that has way more power than you need for the school run, or a lightweight purpose-built track day car, you'll find it here. Every car in this eclectic group represents the very best of its breed. They're the very top of the tree. Some of these are pumped up versions of everyday cars, bursting with power and often bulging at the seams. From classic 60s muscle to more modern sports cars, each car here truly represents the best driving experiences of their era. And, with the exception of the more extreme track toys, they show how far you can push a daily driver without sacrificing the comfy seats, soundproofing and room for the whole family. Here, you'll take on the thrill and challenge of racing at night. Visibility is limited, and cooler temperatures affect how tires grip the track. Nice. Right, so we get the choice between Ultimate Swamp Machines, Executive Heavyweights, Sport Utility Juggernaut, Historic American Muscle, Track Toys, and Modern Sport Legends. Well, considering I'm a muscle car fanatic, I'm going to go for these for the first uh, race uh, race series in this uh, volume. So yeah. It began with the bootleggers who tuned their cars to try and outrun the cops. Their recipe was simple. They inserted a big engine in a small production car and put power above all else. Their creations were the ancestors of the American auto industry and later inspired the pony cars we fell in love with. So yeah, I already have a few of these in my garage, <laughs> as you probably no doubt have already guessed. 
So yeah, these are the ones I already have. The uh, AMC Javelin, the Rebel, the Buick GSX, Chevy Camaro, Chevy Corvette, Chevy Camaro again, uh, Chevrolet Chevelle, Chevrolet Corvette, Challenger, Ford XB Falcon, Ford Mustang 1, Ford Mustang Boss 302, the original Mustang GT, the Cougar Eliminator, the Plymouth GTX, Pontiac Firebird, Pontiac GTO George and Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. So let's go for that. First because I enjoy this hell out of this car, I'm gonna go for this one. Yeah, let's go for a manual upgrade, uh, no greater than 400, right. So I'm gonna save this setup because I use this for uh, online racing. It's actually really rather good. Beat a couple of, uh, came second in a B class race against a bunch of minis and other cars that quite frankly are obviously the leaderboard cars so yeah it was really rather decent it's probably going to be a bit more of a handful though with only top D class though so. alright brakes essential any roll bars give it a bit of lacking in weight big rear tyres on it. They're quite small for something that has what? 425 horsepower. Ridiculously small. So let's get some big tyres on it. And there we go. That's pretty much all we can do. <laughs> to go on test drive there. So let's go back, go back into Korea, race at night. And we're at uh, Le Mans Bugatti circuit. Your next race will be at Le Mans, featuring the oldest surviving Dunlop bridge. I haven't been on this so far, I think, on the game. Certainly haven't driven it at night. And certainly not driven it at night in a muscle car, so yeah. This should be fun. Come on. God, this game takes forever. Skip forward if you want. <laughs> Finally. anything on this. I'll buy another small one to see if we can get any boosts. Plenty of boosts. Good. Get some extra credits. Get some extra XP. There we go. Let's start race. I've always loved the look of this car. Probably a bit controversial, considering it's a 70s car and a lot of the cars from the 70s were, to say the least, not all that good in terms of uh, design. But there are a few exceptions in this being one of them.
sure you've been Mustang God. Bit of understeer, but then this is a very heavy car at the front. That big ass engine. doesn't really stop me, but and there's a lot of body roll. <laughs> All the classic uh, traits of a muscle car from the 60s and 70s. I expect someone to crash in this series. Just hope it's not going to be me. to see this car back in the Forza Motorsport series though because I don't think it was in the fifth one. I know the Cuda was but I don't think this was. And it came back in Horizon 2 and now it's back on this. Back on the track. Where it's more more fun than any uh, it's, uh, like on Forza Horizon 2. Handles far better than I was expecting, but and again, we still do have traction control and ABS on, so maybe when we get further down the series, we'll uh, take either one of them off. I don't think I'll ever truly be comfortable with taking ABS off because, yeah, I know you uh, get less braking out of it and etc., but. In an emergency where you have to brake and steer, it does come in handy. Which is the whole point of it after all. Uh, sorry Chevelle, or oh, Nova even. driving a lot of this trap about headlines. Too much speed into that corner then. What's this car look at night inside? Pretty ordinary, I guess. Do get a far more sense of speed though when you see that speed all go all the way around. It's a really big steering wheel, though. Outside view now that I've caught up. So I race better in, on the outside than on the inside. The 
this is one of the few muscle cars from this era that had a really decent top speed. So a lot of cars from that era ran out of steam around 140. Some ran out even before 130, like the uh, Mercury Cougar and the AMC Javelin. So, yeah, the car that doesn't really need much changing to it from engine perspective. And, uh, and you have to suffer from this era in terms of the muscle cars. And this is one of the better ones, personally. I think the Nova also has a fairly decent top speed as well. Not that it matters on this track. It's all about grip. And even though I'm in this thing, I still have more than that. Nova does. And first race, uh, and we're in first. And we get some extra uh, money and XP as well. Ferrari F12, pretty nice car. Certainly one of the better Ferraris from the last few years. Anyway, since this is only a uh, five, no, one, two, four race series, we'll end it there. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye.